I got a text last week from one of you who watches our daily devos and the gist of the text went like this, that when I look around at our government, at our community, at our church, at our families, that I don't see a whole lot of effort or unity, you know, a whole lot of effort being given to unity. And then at the very end, the, the reason I, this text is stuck in my brain is the text ended with this question, how can I help? And that was the most encouraging text I got all week. Uh, this person had been listening to our daily devos about unity and the question was how do I help? What can I do to help? And I think that's the best question I was asked all week. It was encouraging to know that somebody is really wanting to be a champion for unity. Unity needs champions. It needs people. And I do believe that just one person can make a difference. I've seen one person make a difference for the cause of unity in a marriage. And one person can make a difference in a church. And really one person can make a difference in a community because unity is infectious. When one person begins to champion its cause, other people jump on board pretty quickly. And so this week, what I want to do is take that to the next level and just kind of talk about some ways I want to answer that question as best as I can. How can we help? How can we move forward and be a champion for unity and harmony in our homes, um, in the places where we work, in our community? And for me, most importantly, in our church family, how can we promote and be champions of unity? And I want to read you a verse that we read yesterday during uh, worship service. It's Philippians chapter two. This is one of those verses that if it was the only verse we had, if this was the only verse you memorized, if this was the only verse you applied, it truly would change things. It really would make a difference um, in the way our, our church, uh, church life just goes about and the way our community is affected. It really would make a difference. So let me read it to you. It's Philippians chapter two verses three and four. I'm going to read from the New International this uh, today. Tomorrow I'm going to read you the Amplified. Uh, Paul says to the church in Philippi, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others more valuable than yourselves or value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. I want to talk a little bit today about selfish ambition. Do nothing, Jesus follower, don't do anything with a motivation of selfish ambition. What is selfish ambition? If you do a quick search uh, in the YouVersion app, you'll find that that phrase, that Greek phrase, selfish ambition, is used about 40 times in the New Testament. It is something we are cautioned against, selfish ambition. If you think about the word ambition, it's a good word, right? It means you want to make things better. You want to do things that, that are improving. Um, and there's nothing at all wrong with having ambition. In fact, um, I, I can see ambition as a as a great gift to, to many people who just want to see things be better, who want to see things improve, who, who want to see the world around them um, be affected for good and move from a bad place to a good place. That's ambition. The, the qualifier is the word selfish, and that is the qualifier used 40 times in the New Testament that if you have ambition, that's fine, but don't have selfish ambition. Don't, in other words, don't use that desire within you to make things better, to, to make things improve. Don't use that for yourself only. And this is really the first step in unity is ridding ourselves of selfishness. The reason there's disunity is we value ourselves more than others. We value our ideas and our opinions above anyone else's. And most of all, we value our way of doing things above everyone else's. And if we're going to have unity, if you're going to help promote and, and champion unity, one of the first things we have to do is get rid of selfish ambition. Yes, make things better. Yes, improve things. Find a way for us to move from bad to good, but don't use that ambition selfishly. What I'm discovering you know, in this study from 1 Corinthians 13 and just the longer I'm with Jesus, uh, selfishness has to go. Selfish people can't be good parents. Selfish people can't be good spouses. And certainly selfish people can't be good 
Jesus followers. So if you're going to champion unity and harmony, first, let's do nothing out of selfish ambition. Find a way for you today to use your ambition to help someone else. See you later.